Welcome back to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. You're Julia Mon and I'm Father Sean Wilson, yep. and uh, yep. we be podcasting. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Monday's podcast day. It is yeah. podcast day. It's, the time. it's the memorial of St. Francis Xavier Cabrini. Great saint. Great saint. For America. Yeah. America. First American citizen to be canonized. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So she's not... A, she was from Italy, mm-hmm. came over here. Yeah, yeah, not really planning on it. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not like she got on the wrong flight and <laughs> showed up here. <laughs> right. The wrong ship. Right. Yeah. What was this, 1800s? Yeah. Yeah. She always had a dream to to found a mission or to be a missionary sister in China. Mm-hmm. And uh, an uh, Italian bishop was like, hey, no, you need to come to America and serve the Italian immigrants. She eventually went to Pope Leo the Thirteenth, mm-hmm. and Pope Leo basically told her, uh, you're called to go west, not east. Mm. So she went to America, came to America, and she did just that, mm-hmm. serving the Italian immigrants. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Another great saint. Great saint. Got to love her. You know, actually, I'm going to I'm gonna be in New York City for 24 hours in uh-huh. January. I was like, I should go to her shrine. Oh. So she's buried there. She's right underneath the altar, the St. Francis Xavier Cabrini Shrine in... Uh, I think it's like the Upper East Side of Manhattan. Oh, so you should definitely do that. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll see what ensues. I'll be mm-hmm. be with some family, so mm-hmm. we'll see what they want to do. But mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. could be cool. That's great. Anyways, happy feast day of Memorial of right. Mother Cabrini. Well, by the time this records, I'm still wishing them it now <laughs> to all of you out there, wherever you may be at ever whatever time it is. Uh huh. Uh-huh. I don't know. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. Today is November thirteenth. Mm-hmm. This record. This will post on whatever day not Friday f- is. Not today. Seventeenth, Grace says. Mm. We keep her around because she's smart. Is that right? Seventeenth. I thought you were saying, oh, is it right? Is she smart? She's smart. <laughs> no, I meant like. You look like you were questioning your, and I thought, well, I don't do math, so I just trusted you. <laughs> okay, yeah, the seventeenth. Right, will be Friday. Okay, great, good, mm-hmm. wonderful. Yeah. What else is new? What else is new? Um, I went to the Bakken's musical over the weekend. They did a great job. That was they delightful. Too. They did a great yeah, job. It was yeah. really, really good. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Good stuff. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let us pray. Let's do it. Yep. Lots to talk about today. Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for your offering. We ask that you may always renew in. Uh, in our lives, the power of your sacrifice, and the power of the love which has been poured forth into our hearts, that you may take us all back to the Father's house. And so we entrust this time into your hands. We ask that you may bless all of those who are listening today, all of those who are gathered here with us, and uh, we thank you for all that you continue to do in our lives. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, we are in... 606 to 618? Mm-hmm. Is that what you had? That's what I had. You had there was like a question mark on the <laughs> well, end of that. Last year or last week I didn't have the right paragraphs. Oh, or, that's, that's right. right. So okay, 606 to 618, the offering mm-hmm. of Jesus. Plus right. then when I was re- reading this, I had marked up like parts of these paragraphs already, like we had already covered it. Oh. But I might have just been doing some fun reading on my own. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know why the mysterious marks were in there, but it was mm. definitely had my hand all over it. Uh, mm. Any whoosies. This is a beautiful section. It is. It's it a great section. Profound. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but where are we actually in the catechism? So we're, we're in the creed, in the part about the death of Christ, mm-hmm. right? So um, the, the trial, the death of all of that, mm-hmm. of Jesus. What's the section? Jesus Christ suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. Mm-hmm. So specifically the part about Christ makes an offering of his life mm-hmm. to the Father, which, you know... Is important to just think about because Jesus wasn't just like passive and let everything happen to him, right? Mm-hmm. It's not like he's just going through his trial, his suffering, but he's willingly, right, actively offering himself to the Father. And mm-hmm. you see this, like you see this when we would just like read the scriptures and watch Jesus. Like he's not just kind of like, all right, whatever happens, happens, but he's willfully um, taking up his cross mm-hmm. Um embracing the sacrifice that the Lord's called him to. doesn't mean it's easy, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, so he's o- he's making an offering, not just like being killed, right? Mm-hmm. So he's making an offering of his life, mm-hmm. So, which is important for us in like a spiritual sense of the th- when things happen in our own lives, it's not just like, all right, God, I'll let this happen, but it's actually making the offering of our life and the struggles, right? Like it's, all right, if you want to do this, I guess we're going to play by your way, but it's actually, okay, I embrace the cross and this is the 
path that you have for my life. So there's like a real, there's a real great example from our Lord of like what it means to actually pick up the cross and not just like put up with the burdens of life. Yeah. Need we say anything else? Probably. We, we haven't even up. started the paragraphs <clears throat> yet. Oh my goodness. Honestly, I'm going to, I'm going to struggle with this because it is like so profound and deep and just so good. And like mm-hmm. the heart of our faith, the heart of what yep. we believe um, that Christ enters into our humanity to redeem it, mm-hmm. to save it, that it is a mess, that we are a mess. Yeah. Um, but he willingly takes that on to suffer and die for us. And yeah. you could describe this uh, earlier in this room, people were speaking a little bit of Spanish. So I just want to like this, this paragraph is what you would mm-hmm. say in Spanish, muy rico, very rich, oh, muy rico. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Rich, uh-huh. deep. Yep. Okay, good. It is that. Um, muy so rico. In, the, in this paragraph, there's, a, there's just a lot of little sections, right? And just a paragraph or two in each section. So this first, 606 and 607, is Christ's whole life is an offering to the Father. Mm -hmm. So it's not just his death is an offering to the Father, Mm -hmm. not just his passion, not just the trial, but everything he does is an offering to the Father. Mm -hmm. And so even like the incarnation is basically him offering his life, right? The eternal, Jesus is, Jesus, or the Son existed before he became incarnate in the womb of the Virgin Mary, and so he willingly enters into humanity to eventually offer his life to mm-hmm. the Father. His whole life is a continual offering. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the very reason for the incarnation is that God became became man so that Christ could offer his life to the Father. The Father loves me because I lay down my life, said the Lord, for I do as the Father has commanded me so that the world may know that I love the Father. So that's not just his... His, not just his death, but that's mm-hmm. every moment of his mm-hmm. life. That's why he keeps going away and praying mm-hmm. so that he can continue to offer his life to the Father. What about this from um, John's Gospel? My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. What about that? What? Yeah. So good. So that's the nourishment mm-hmm. that he receives in life is to not do his own will. Mm-hmm. How about that for us? You know, mm-hmm. like, is our food not to do what we want? Mm-hmm. No. I mean, it should be, Mm -hmm. but uh, sometimes that's bitter, Mm -hmm. and that's not the food I generally want to eat, but sometimes you do, you know? Mm -hmm. But he gives us that example. Mm -hmm. Right. The desire to embrace his Father's plans of redeeming love inspired Jesus' whole life, for his redemptive passion was the very reason for his incarnation. So he becomes flesh, right? Mm -hmm. The Son of God becomes incarnate in Mm -hmm. the person of Jesus for this very reason to offer his life to the Father, Mm -hmm. to redeem us by his passion. Right, like he knows what's going to happen and says, "I'll do it." Right, and so he asked, "And what shall I say, Father? Save me from this hour." No, no, for this purpose <laughs> I have come to this hour. Yeah, yeah, right. This is why I'm here. Yeah, okay. Shall I not drink the cup which the Father has given me? And then from the cross, just before it is finished, he said, "I thirst." He thirsts for mm-hmm. us. He thirsts for our souls. He thirsts for our love. Mm-hmm. He thirsts for us to receive this gift that he's winning for us, that he's gaining for us on the cross. Right. It's finished. He's offered his life to the Father. It's so good. But uh, he does so as the lamb who mm-hmm. takes away the sins of the world. Mm-hmm. So constantly, you know, in the Old Testament, the Passover sacrifice of the lamb mm-hmm. is what was offered to God, right? In expiation for sins, in thanksgiving for the freedom that was won at, at the Passover. Mm-hmm. So there's this constant discussion of the lamb in the Old Testament. And even in the practice up and in, into the time of Jesus and actually after was the Passover offering of a lamb. Mm-hmm. And John kicks off, John the Baptist shows up in John's gospel different John, of course, (laughs) and points out Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you knew this or not, but human beings and lambs are different. (laughs) So John saying, there's a lamb, is like, no, John, that's a human being, right? Like, yeah. You should have ate more today. (laughs) Right, right. right. We need to get out a children's book where you can point out which one's the lamb, which one's the person. Right. Uh, But no, he's, of course, this theological truth Mm -hmm. that Christ is coming as this new lamb, as the fulfillment, as this paragraph says, of the Paschal lamb who comes mm-hmm. to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Mm. Right. And then just like side note, Jesus mm-hmm. is the lamb of God. Mm-hmm. In the Passover sacrifice, you had to eat the lamb for the sacrifice to be completed. So mm-hmm. we eat the lamb in the Eucharist, right? Behold the lamb of God, behold mm-hmm. him who takes away the sins of the world. Mm-hmm. We're all about that lamb. Mm-hmm. Uh, truth. 
I'm, yeah, we should whether be. it's in the Mass or whether right. it's in John's Gospel. Right. So right? He, and Jesus was Jesus was offered at the very moment, at the very time of day when the lambs were being slaughtered for the Paschal sacrifice. Mm. It's the same time, and the Jewish readers of John's Gospel know this. And so as the lambs are being sacrificed, so the new lamb is being sacrificed. And like you can't make this stuff up. It's so beautiful. Jesus is at the same time the suffering servant who silently allows himself to be led to the slaughter and who bears the sin of the multitudes and also the Paschal Lamb, the symbol of Israel's redemption at the first Passover. The Catechism doesn't mention this, but he's not only the Lamb, but he's the priest, right? The priests mm-hmm. in the temple would be the ones that would offer, offer the Lamb, mm-hmm. but Jesus, you know, doesn't... He is the, the priest who's making the offering of his very life, too. Mm-hmm. So he's the priest and the Lamb because he's actively offering, right? Not just like a dumb Lamb that's like, okay, whatever you do, <laughs> you know? Right. But, <laughs> But he actually willingly goes through it, and that just made the whole Paschal <laughs> sacrifice seem really trite and childish and stupid. But no, you know, no, it's... You, people come to expect that from me, I think, <laughs> and put up with it. Sure, right. I'm not going to say enjoy it because uh, <laughs> I don't think that's true. <laughs> I'm laughing. But you I'm... are, but <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Okay, so that was the little. That was a paragraph: the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. And then we go into, I think, just. One paragraph again, yeah. yeah. Jesus freely embraced the Father's redeeming love. By embracing in his human heart the Father's love for men, Jesus loved them to the end. For greater love has no man than this than to then... So sorry. For greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. In suffering and death, his humanity became the free and perfect instrument of his divine love, which desires the salvation of men. Indeed, out of love for his father and for men, whom the father wants to save, Jesus freely accepted his passion and death. No one takes my life from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. Hence the sovereign freedom of God's son as he went to his death which is what you were saying before. This isn't just like, oh, this is going to happen, so whatever. Mm -hmm. This was, no one is taking this from me. I'm freely choosing this to enter into the Father's plan. And it gets to the motivation in this paragraph too, out of love for his Father Mm. and love for us. Mm. Sometimes we forget that it is Jesus' primary focus is the love of God, right? And the love of neighbor flows from that. Mm. right? So he does love us infinitely, and that's probably why we focus on this, because it's about... Jesus Christ loving us. Mm-hmm. But when we look at him, his his obsession is the Father. Mm-hmm. Right? Everything is directed towards the Father, you know, and, and some of the things you've already quoted and things that are constantly throughout here. So he's he's obsessed with the Father. And so when we watch Jesus, that's that's like gotta be our obsession too. So mm-hmm. yeah. So it's not just about us, right? It's mm-hmm. not he just does he doesn't die just out of love for us. That's of course hugely part of it. Mm-hmm. But it, he loves us so much because he loves the Father. Mm. It's a fruit of his love for the Father, mm-hmm. his love for us. Similarly, mm. in our own lives, right? Mm-hmm. Our, our love of each other is the fruit of our love of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So It's like begging the question, like, do we spend more time focusing on the externals that are fruits of our faith, of, of being charitable towards mm-hmm. our brothers and sisters, as opposed to actually loving the Lord with all of our mind, all of our heart, all our soul, all our strength Mm -hmm. and allowing that love to flow from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can remember something that somebody told me one time that I think you're going to, you're going to find fascinating. Mm -hmm. So in the history of the church, Mm -hmm. when you look at like the history of the growth of this, the development of the spiritual life and just how it's lived out and kind of how it's highlighted in the church, Mm -hmm. you get in the early church, you get the monks, right, who basically go off into the desert or they go off into a monastery to focus entirely on the love of God, right? So they're just constantly focused on the love of God, and, and that's, that's good. And if people come to them, they're, of course, very hospitable, right? You mm-hmm. get that in the rule of St. Benedict. So it's this very much contemplative life. Mm-hmm. And then the, the primary thing begins to shift in the, uh, in the uh, like, St. Francis, right? St. Francis comes on the scene in the early Middle Ages, uh, maybe middle, middle ages, I don't know, 1200s, mm-hmm. and is basically, there's this incredible love of God, so he takes away the time for prayer, but then also lives an active life of preaching. But the, Francis is very much a man of prayer, you know? Mm-hmm. But then things even develop further in somebody like Ignatius of Loyola, who basically realizes you can be a contemplative in the day-to-day life, right? He's the one who who says, you know, like can, takes the breaks from the active life to realize where the Lord is in that. So it's like kind of this 
very active life, but then you're taking these breaks to go into the contemplative life, but to see that they're all intertwined, right? God's always a part of my day. Mm -hmm. And then you get to the, in some ways, like the full blossoming. Now, who knows what the Lord will do next in the person of the little flower, Mm -hmm. right? Who in the little flower is just completely obsessed with the love of God. And she sees it in absolutely everywhere in her life. So you almost don't need to break from active life to contemplation because there is God in the the love. And then it, it lives out in her successor of Teresa of Calcutta. Mm-hmm. So I don't do The priest who kind of shared all this was, mm-hmm. oh, you know, you just kind of get the jaw on the floor. Mm-hmm. Like, Holy cow. I don't mm-hmm. do it justice, but mm-hmm. yeah. Gosh. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that is it's, fascinating. It's muy rico. Yes. That. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Uh-huh. Let's keep going. Let's keep moving. Okay. Next because two. at the last supper, mm-hmm. Jesus anticipates the free offering of his life. Mm. This is paragraph 610 and 611. Um, On the eve of his passion, while still free, Jesus transformed this Last Supper with the apostles into the memorial of his voluntary offering to the Father for the salvation of men. Yep. So it's this transformation. And Pope Benedict preached a, uh, gosh, I think it was a Holy Thursday Mass that he talks about like this chain reaction of transformations that I feel like every Holy Thursday is some, I preach some version of it. But he, mm. he starts off, but what Jesus does is he transform a violent act into an act of love, mm. right? Or an act of sacrifice, right? The violent act of being killed, he transforms it into an act of love. But that act of love then gets transformed into a meal, right? It gets transformed into an offering at the Last Supper, where he basically anticipates his offering in, in the meal form. But then in that meal, what's transformed is bread and wine is transformed into the very flesh and blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. And then we receive that. And so we're the next ones transformed, right? We're transformed into what we receive, right? We should be transformed into the very likeness of Christ. But then once we receive that and we are transformed into the very person of Christ, our mission, our call is to go out and transform the world, is to go out and transform through love of God and love of neighbor and the acts of charity. Mm. So this chain reaction of transformations, of course, this, these two paragraphs is talking about how the um, mm. how he anticipates his offering through the Last Supper, but it's it set it it ought to set off a series of chain reactions. Yeah, and then what I was reading from initially was six ten, and then six eleven goes on to say that Jesus includes the apostles in his own offering and bids them perpetuate it. Right, right. By doing so, the Lord institutes his apostles as priests of the new covenant. So what do we do every time we celebrate Mass is to enter into the sacrifice of Calvary Mm. that Christ anticipated with a meal, a sacrificial meal. Mm -hmm. What was that word again? Chain reaction. Oh, the Spanish word. Muy rico. Muy, very, rico, rich. Muy rico. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a paragraph. (laughs) See. 612, the agony in Gethsemane. Mm. Ugh. The cup of the new covenant, which Jesus anticipated when he offered himself at the Last Supper, is afterwards accepted by him from his father's hands in his agony in the garden at Gethsemane, making himself obedient unto death. Jesus prays, my father, if it is po- if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Thus, he expresses the horror that death represented for his human nature. Like ours, his human nature is destined for eternal life, but unlike ours, it is perfectly exempt from sin, the cause of death. Above all, his human nature has been assumed by the divine person of the author of life, the living one. By accepting in his human will that the Father's will be done, he accepts his death as redemptive, for he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. The agony in Gethsemane. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, it's like beautifully depicted in that movie, The Passion of the Christ. Mm. And I I think it it, it hits the point where like there's in that, like there's this wrestling between the two wills of Jesus because he's truly human, truly Mm -hmm. divine. So he has two two wills, a divine Mm -hmm. will and a human will. And they're... I mean, they're in agony, right? Because there's this wrestling between the human will of like, this is death, and the human Jesus knows what death is. But then there's this aligning of his human will to his divine will when, okay, Mm -hmm. the hours come, let's Mm -hmm. roll. Mm -hmm. He doesn't exactly say that. That's kind (laughs) of a a paraphrase. Right. But but that's what happens Mm -hmm. in this. And so it's like the... His will becomes concrete after mm-hmm. agonizing in the, in the garden, and then you know, then there's no turning aside, right? Like you see him as he's going through his passion, he's heading to Calvary, and um, out of great love for oh. for you and for me and the Father. Oh, it's 
time going back to let's roll. I, he didn't say that exactly, but you know what I so, <laughs> what I said before, like what shall I say, Father, save me from this hour? Yeah. No, for it's no. this hour that I've come. That's right. Gosh. Let's okay. roll. Let's roll. <laughs> let's do this. Let us roll. That's probably what he chanted. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> Okay, the next two paragraphs are Christ's death is the unique and definitive sacrifice. Right. Christ's death is both the paschal sacrifice that accomplishes the definitive redemption of men through the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world and the sacrifice of the new covenant, which restores man to communion with God by reconciling him to God through the blood of the covenant, which was poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. The sacrifice of Christ is unique. It completes and surpasses all other sacrifices. Um, first, it is a gift from God the Father himself, for the Father handed his Son over to sinners in order to reconcile us with himself. At the same time, it is the offering of the Son of God made man, who in freedom and love offered his life to his Father through the Holy Spirit in reparation for our disobedience. Right. So there's two things basically say that this is this is the fulfillment of everything that happened in the old covenant. Right. This is the definitive establishing of the new the new, the new order of things, right? The new mm-hmm. relationship, the new bond, the new friendship between God and man has, it's definitively, it's reached its final phase mm-hmm. in Christ's offering, right? Mm-hmm. So if somebody basically says, if somebody says, well, no, you also have to make this sacrifice, right? You also have to, you know, make the sacrifice of some sort of animal. I don't mm-hmm. know which one to pick on. An mm-hmm. ox, mm-hmm. oxen, <laughs> you have to make a cow, you know, you got to <laughs> offer a cow for Christ to really be alive, right? Mm-hmm. To make that offering. It's like, no, no, the definitive sacrifice has been made in Jesus. Mm-hmm. Now we enter into that and we continue to offer our lives, mm-hmm. but no new sacrifice because this is, this is it. Mm-hmm. All pointing towards him, all fulfilled mm-hmm. in him. Jesus substitutes his obedience for our disobedience. That's paragraph 615. Right. And you see uh, St. Paul talk about this in the letter to the Romans. It's like in chapters chapter 5, I think, of the letter through the Romans, through one man, sin entered the world, mm-hmm. through Adam and his fall, but through one one offering, one sacrifice, Christ, freedom, new life, rebirth has entered the world. Mm-hmm. So he makes this one offering for sin. Um, and so that means he takes it all upon himself. And there was this sacrifice in the Old Testament on the, the Day of Atonement where the priest would actually speak the sins of the people over over the lamb, and then that lamb would be killed, right? Mm-hmm. As if that's the Lord forgiving. And so that lamb like took on the sins in the Old Testament mm-hmm. in a figurative sense, and now it's in a personal sense. Jesus does that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You think about in, in the, the prophet Isaiah, um, Isaiah talks, you know, is the voice of God, and he says, I have written your names upon the palms of my hands. And it's just a beautiful image of him remembering, but then you think about like, Jesus writes his names upon the palm of the hands of them, boom, they're mm-hmm. pierced through, right? Mm-hmm. And so he takes upon our, the sacrifice through mm-hmm. himself mm-hmm. of what, right? I think Scott Hahn puts it in a way like, uh, we we owed a debt we could not pay, and he paid a debt he did not owe. Mm-hmm. We owed a debt we could not pay, our sins, mm-hmm. and he paid a debt he did not owe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what gratitude we should have. Yeah, and there goes that cry on the cross, I thirst. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's been done. He's done it. Right. Receive the gift, mm-hmm. right? Mm. You need nothing else. Um, 6, 16 and 6, 17, Jesus consummates his sacrifice on the cross. It is love to the end that confers on Christ's sacrifice its value as redemption and reparation, as atonement and sat- satisfaction. He knew and loved us all when he offered his life. Now the love of Christ controls us because we are convinced that one has died for all, therefore all have died. No man, not even the holiest, was ever able to take on himself the sins of all men and offer himself as a sacrifice for all. The existence in Christ of the divine person of the Son, who at once surpasses and embraces all human persons and constitutes himself as the head of all mankind, makes possible his redemptive sacrifice for all. And then 617 talks about the Council of Trent a little bit and ends with, Hail, O cross, our only hope. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah, you think of in this uh, this paragraph 616 about how this is is Christ who is the divine person who makes the sacrifice once for all, Mm -hmm. is like in italics. And that great line, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually, we put that on... uh, 
in St. Lawrence. We painted it above the above the altar because that's, you know, the perpetuation of Christ's sacrifice. So you think about like when he's lifted up on the cross, that's for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. It's not just for Christians or for those born into a Christian family, but all people Christ wants to draw through to himself through the cross because all people suffer. And mm-hmm. so to find meaning in suffering is it was like one of the petitions at Mass this Sunday was the first one that mm-hmm. was, you know, was a great petition mm-hmm. of that uh all may find their meaning of suffering in Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, in a very For real all. way too. That's why, you know, especially as Catholics, devotionally we don't take our Lord off the cross. You know, why no we way. we look to that. If we don't if we don't have an if Christ isn't the answer in our times of suffering, we have nothing to offer to anyone. Like, and so, mm-hmm. yes, He's conquered death. Yes, He's He's risen from the dead. There's yeah. no denying that reality. At the same time, like we still suffer here. <laughs> we haven't yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So to know that He suffers with us. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We don't take Him off. Right. Mm-hmm. I think in heaven, and who knows what it'll be mm-hmm. like. But the images of like heaven, uh, like the heavenly hosts and everybody when Jesus is carrying his cross Mm. side by side, like triumphant, like I, I'm not still hanging on it, but I I'm victory. I, Mm. this, this cross is now my trophy, Mm. you know? And like, I think that's the, that's Mm. probably, that's the image I think of what heaven will be like, Mm. you know? Hmm. Yeah. You talked about the, the imagery in the, the passion, you know, when he gets, when he receives the cross in that mm. movie and like he embraces it and kisses it and then is even mocked for that, yeah. for that reality. But there's something beautiful yeah. about that too. Hmm. Yeah. There's something in like our own prayer lives too, of like sometimes when we're like c- giving God the business and like mm-hmm. complaining about it, um, <laughs> whatever our crosses are. Yeah. And then if the, I know this is just myself, like every now and then the Holy Spirit will give that little inspiration of accept it. Mm-hmm. Like, all right, Lord, this stinks, mm-hmm. but I, I take it. Mm-hmm. I accept it. Do with mm-hmm. me whatever you will. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. yeah, those aren't easy moments, but, mm-hmm. phew, but that's how so we be become it. like Christ. Mm-hmm. Fiat. Fiat. So that's be it. not Spanish. That's Latin. <laughs> okay. Let it be done to me. Thank you. All right. 618. Let's mm-hmm. last our, paragraph. Our participation in Christ's sacrifice. The cross is the unique sacrifice of Christ, the one mediator between God and men. But Because in his incarnate divine person, he has in some way united himself to every man, the possibility of being made partners in a way known to God in the Paschal Mystery is offered to all men. He calls his disciples to take up their cross and follow him, for Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example so that we should follow in his steps. In fact, Jesus desires to associate with his redeeming sacrifice those who were to be its first beneficiaries. This is achieved supremely in the case of his mother, who was associated more intimately than any other person in the mystery of his redemptive suffering. Mm. And then we get a beautiful quote from St. Rose of Lima, Apart from the cross, there is no other ladder by which we may get to heaven. That's true. Mm-hmm. She's right. Mm-hmm. I loved in here the possibility of being made partners is offered to all men. Mm. You want to you want to be par- partners in this? Like this is offered to you, right? It's uh, this possibility of taking up this cross with him and in him and for him. It's not like forced upon exactly. us either, right? Like exactly. you don't have to join your sufferings to those of Christ. Mm-hmm. You can figure it out yourself. You right? can try. You, you can try. <laughs> I tell you, it doesn't work out well, Mm -mm. you know? Mm -mm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only way to find Mm -hmm. meaning in the midst of the cross. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. What was that Spanish word to just sum up? Muy rico. I mean, seriously, so much depth here. The heart of the gospel, the heart of the good news Mm -hmm. right here, the offering of Jesus. And the resurrection, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Conquered it. Which shows that, you know... It like confirms everything he ever discussed, you know, mm. everything he said, everything he mm. was, everything mm. he is. Mm. So mm. that's a that's a good section. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna cross that one off. Um, the in brief paragraphs six nineteen to six twenty three. If you want to read that, and then um, to our listeners, Father Sean was telling me before we began that after today we're down to 25 25 spots left on the board on the board that's not very many it's not it's uh, a quarter of a hundred (laughs) right good so where are we going this is gonna get harder and harder it is but got your eyes set on something patient so i am patient (laughs) (laughs) that's gotta be out of the camera above the board (laughs) okay Um, i'm going for the very top corner okay that wasn't it either. Yeah, uh, that is going to be a hard one. Well, they're dropping like flies. 
Oh my gosh, Wilson. I better get out of this shot. That they're they are do you notice they're like dropping towards me? <laughs> they're like coming down. Uh, bring my helmet next time, my hard hat. I'm proud of you for reaching that one you threw on the ceiling, basically. That was really high. Thanks, Julia. <laughs> that that was better. That was not good. That was the worst. Watch That's it. on top of JP2. <laughs> Oh, 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 that was bad. I feel like this might be the hardest one to get. So. Stand up. Stand up? No? No? Are there any rules against him standing up to throw the dart? No. Uh, oh, there's, there's okay. Well, the other one's oh, on, on top of him. Yeah. Right, okay, well, here you go. Keep trying. Do you want, do you want me to try stand up? Try and try up again? Or? No, I want you to just... Oh, <laughs> Grace wants you to stand up on one leg with your eyes closed. <laughs> Yeah. <gasps> Bingo. Oh, I <coughs> got it. Yep. 2777 to 2796. Our Father who art in heaven. Mm. That'll be the prayer section there. Yeah. This might be our last one that we seven, have left seven. in the prayer section. That can't be right. 2796. I thought I saw one other one. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we're getting I close be to wrong. being through it all in the prayer section. If this isn't the last, it's one it's of the close. last. Okay. All right. Well, that was fun, as was always. Yeah. Thank you okay. for persevering. Thanks for cheering me on. You're welcome. Um, the In Brief Paragraph 622 quotes three different scripture passages, Matthew 20, 28, John 13, 1, and then 1 Peter 1, 18, which is just really beautiful. And mm. So I'm just going to end with that, if that's okay with you. I, absolutely. Oh, okay. The redemption won by Christ consists in this, that he came to give his life as a ransom for many. That is, he loved his own to the end, so that they might be ransomed from the futile ways inherited from their fathers.